Hey guys, today we are going to cover some quick tips on how to set up your Sony ZV-1 for cinematic video. So you can have settings more movie-like than something like The Godfather, but with much less horse decapitation. We will run over all the key settings and more importantly explain why we are choosing each one as well as showing you a bunch of test footage for how these settings look in practice. Remember that something being truly cinematic is about storytelling or provoking some thought or emotion from your audience and no amount of settings will do that for you, that's about your creativity. Perhaps that's why my short film about a man being disappointed in his nuts was not the masterpiece I anticipated. And just before we start, if you enjoy the video, then like, subscribe, and let me know any thoughts or questions down in the comments. Thank you. First setting, let's choose our shooting mode. We want to always be in manual mode. This ensures that we won't get any weird automatic changes in exposure that you would risk with any of the other modes. There's a video on what those shooting modes do and when to use them linked in the description in case you aren't familiar. We select manual using the mode button on top of the ZV-1, then choosing movie and then manual exposure. Choose your resolution from menu two, tab one, file format. I recommend selecting 4K unless you have a specific constraint or other reason to choose 1080p. 4K will not only give you more detailed images, but also more total resolution, which means you have more space to zoom into your image and create fake camera movements in post-production before image quality noticeably suffers, which is pretty useful. Next, we need to choose a frame rate, and when it comes to getting a cinematic look, we always want to select 24p. 24 frames per second has been the standard in movies and other cinematic video for the best part of a century now, having originally been arrived at as a compromise between a frame rate that gave smooth enough motion, could acceptably record and sync audio, and could minimize costs due to film itself being expensive. Just like how most politicians aren't inherently incompetent liars, 24 frames per second is not inherently cinematic, but both of these things have become deeply ingrained in our expectations through association. So 24 frames per second is now just how movies and cinematic video look. Go to menu two, tab one, record setting, and always choose the highest quality option. So select the one with the highest M number after 24p. This is the number of megabits per second. More megabits per second means a higher quality image, so select 24p 100m if you're shooting in 4K, or 24p 50m if you're shooting in 1080p. All this advice is for normal speed playback of footage. If you're looking at slow motion sequences, then check out the detailed guides on both standard and ultra slow motion linked in the description. Another thing which has been established as cinematic is a specific shutter setting, which gives a movie-like motion blur. This convention also goes back to the earlier days of cinema. Film cameras had a physically moving rotary shutter, like our handy GIF from Wikipedia demonstrates. The amount of time each frame got exposed for was determined by the shutter angle. Since we are thinking about a circular shutter, a 180 degree shutter angle would mean half a circle is closed and the other half open. That circular shutter spins round once for each frame of video. So half the duration of each frame would be exposed with light, the other half covered by the shutter. Okay, Captain History, but what does all this mean in practice? The 180 degree shutter rule that resulted from this history means we want our shutter speed to be double our frame rate. That gives an equivalent motion blur because the shutter is open for half the duration of each frame. So at 24 frames per second, doubling that frame rate gives us a shutter speed of one over 48. The ZV-1 and many cameras probably only have one over 50 as the closest option, so that's what we will choose. In reality, our eyes aren't going to see a motion blur difference between one over 48 and one over 50. Press down in the shooting screen to select shutter and then set it using the control wheel. There are definitely some cool applications of other shutter speeds for visual or narrative effects. Maybe I'll talk about those in the future if you guys are interested, but for normal cinematic video, one over 50 is our go-to option. Next, much like my aim to have fewer arrests for public nudity, we need some extra tips to control our exposure. At one over 50 shutter, you may notice lots of overexposure when you have significant amounts of light. The built-in ND filter of the ZV-1 can help with this from menu one, tab seven, but the drawback of this is you can only turn it on or off. 
you have no fine control or ability to increase it. So I'd recommend using a variable ND filter to help control exposure. There's more info on this one in my best value ZV-1 accessories video, including how to attach it. Another thing we want for cinematic results is control of our focus. You'll want to change between auto and manual focus depending on individual shots. You can do this from menu one, tab five. For cinematic effects with focus, I made an in-depth guide, which you can find linked in the description. Most of the time, I prefer the effects you can get when using manual focus, unless you're going for a rack focus shot. Speaking of which, the autofocus drive speed setting found in menu two, tab two, is worth understanding as this helps you control the speed at which focus will change when using rack focus shots. I like setting this to slow, but each setting will give you slightly different looks that might work in different situations. As for picture profile, like a Christopher Nolan movie, I wouldn't overthink it when you're first getting started. If you pay attention to a few movies, you'll soon see that color grading will usually vary the overall look of footage a lot, depending on the color palette, aesthetic and narrative of each film. I'm a big fan of the info on Studio Binder, and you can see some great examples from their summary of color to illustrate this variety. So if I'm saying creative color grading will make a bigger difference to the final cinematic look of footage, does that mean shooting with any picture profile is fine? Sort of, but I still recommend shooting with a flatter profile to preserve more dynamic range and give you more room to adjust things in post-production. I'd suggest experimenting with picture profiles five through to 10, which you can choose in menu one, tab nine. My personal favorite being the HLG profiles at number 10. There's a guide on how I work with HLG in Final Cut linked in the description. If you do use profiles seven, eight, nine, or 10, the S log options and HLG, you can use a setting called Gamma Display Assist, which is found in menu five, tab one. This setting helps you see how footage will look after some standard color grading rather than the flatter image which is actually being recorded. So you can adjust your exposure, lighting, or other things if you need to. If you do use Gamma Display Assist, I suggest leaving it on auto or matching the setting to your picture profile of choice if you only use one. After more gamma than Bruce Banner's radiation rehab, let's cover some quick fire tips and other settings to finish things off. You can control zoom speed from menu two, tab Tab six. Either setting is fine and there's not a huge difference, but it's worth knowing in case it helps with some of your shots. Be sure to turn off the soft skin setting in menu one, tab 10, unless you want people in your shots to look like weird waxwork Snapchat filter hybrids, which isn't usually cinematic unless perhaps you're shooting a movie about Michael Jackson. For aperture setting, well, that's going to vary for any given shot. So there is no go-to cinematic setting. In manual mode, press down to select aperture and then set it by rotating the control wheel. If you want deep focus with lots of background detail, choose a narrow aperture and high F number. If you want shallow focus and more bokeh and separation of foreground and background, choose a wide aperture and low F number. Check out some cool tips on getting more bokeh with the ZV-1 linked in the description. As for ISO found in menu one, tab seven, I would avoid setting this to auto in most situations to avoid those odd automatic changes in exposure that we touched on earlier. The exception to this is some zoom shots as these force the aperture to a minimum of F 2.8 as you zoom in. So if your aperture is wider before you zoom, like F 1.8 for instance, then auto ISO can help even things out. Otherwise I'd set ISO manually. For ISO level, I try to stay below 1600 in most situations and below 3200 in low light, but take that as a rough guide only. There's some low light guides for the ZV-1 which cover this in much more detail, linked in the description. And last, but by no means least, is lighting and also apparently accidental alliteration. Awesome. Lighting isn't something you control with a camera setting, so it's outside the scope of this video, but a cinematic look is massively impacted by lighting. If you want cinematic results, then I suggest you start thinking and learning about lighting if you aren't already. I made a video showing some simple techniques to demonstrate the lighting you can get using just a smartphone torch for surprisingly cinematic results. That is linked in the description. And that is also the end for today. Massive thank you for watching, especially making it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then like, subscribe, and let me know any thoughts or questions down in the comments. But most importantly, until next time, take it easy.